the recording started Jordan and uh, welcome back to the world yeah so, such as it is uh, yeah it's been a long long hard journey trying to get my work out when I know that I'm up against the darkness of this world and um, I totally believe in the and the idea that there is a dark force. I mean, you know, one religion calls it Satan, and others call it the devil, and uh, demons, and demons, and you know, and poltergeists, and spirits, and ghosts. There's all kinds of terms and words that imply that there's some sort of an other world overshadowing this one which there is no doubt in my mind about that at all. There's just, you know, I think it's provable from every indication that's what's going on in the world today. Humans have no control over any of it, none of it. And it is all depravity, murder, violence, drug abuse, alcoholism, marriages being broken up, homes being broken up, uh, you know, the whole human race relegated down to an IQ of 40 while uh, organized crime at the highest at the highest pinnacles of organized crime in the world today actually run the earth and the normal people living from day to day they know that they know it's just like in the days of the Roman Empire when Caesar was God he, he represents Almighty God in the flesh. So whatever that murderous pimp decides to do, because he's lost his mind, you know, we have told that the Caesars, many of them were legitimately mentally insane, like Caligula, who appointed his horse as his pro counsel because he was dying of syphilis, and venereal diseases, his brain was gone, but he was still Caesar, and therefore he could murder and rape and plunder and do anything he wanted. Well, that's the same thing we have today, and that's what people who want to do something to help their fellow man are up against. They're up against a dark world that has been taken over by the demonic, the depravity of the demonic world, spiritism. And so, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the Christians, they will, they will tell you and show you in their Bible that uh, their devil is called Satan, which is actually a Hebrew word, Satan, which means an opposer in a court of law. That's all Satan means in Hebrew. A Satan, S-A and then hyphen T-A-N. A Satan is in Hebrew is someone who opposes you, your enemy, in a court of law. So, you know, theoretically or symbolically, God is judging the world and his opponent in this great legal case of who owns the world and who controls it. Well, the opponent to the good that created the world is a Satan, an opposer. Well, what are we talking about? I don't know. What are we talking about? We could be talking about one group of aliens that created us and another group, like a gang war, another gang moves into the territory and takes trying to take over the earth that uh, the, someone else created. And so that new gang that's moved in on the first one that created us to that original, uh, to those original deities or entities, the new ones moving in would be a Satan, the, those who are opposing the original powers to be. So I, all of that, you know, makes sense to me in some way. I, it wouldn't be a bit surprising to me that there is some kind of a dark, overshadowing <laughs> spiritual presence in the world that is uh, seems to be equal to whoever the good one might be uh, you know, to the good guys if we can even say that I'm not even sure who created us but uh, 
that whole idea of somebody who created us and others that have come in to take over the you know move in on the first gang that's that's probably one of the oldest stories on the earth it goes all the way back into the ancient hindu and the bhagavad gita and the beta the upanishads and and the bible and the hebrew and the phoenician canaanite scriptures all the ancient scriptures of the world talk about the the gods you know who have come here who created us and their enemies out there in space who came here as their enemies and so it all boils down to the same story that we're familiar with called christianity in which god has created us and now there's a devil or one who opposes the power the original powers and so uh the you know there's a story in the Bible about Jesus that says that people came to him one day and uh, and with seeds in their hands and they they showed him the seeds and asked him what are these seeds what kind of seeds are they and it says that Jesus said well why don't you go plant the thing airhead uh, go plant it water it and watch what grows and if after a while, uh, you know, a pear tree grows up, well, I guess it was a pear seed. But if a peach tree grows up, well, I suppose it was a, pe uh, you know, uh, a peach seed. And if an apple tree grows up, airhead, I guess it was an apple seed. So the best way to find out for sure what kind of a seed anything is, plant it and watch and see what comes up. And so, by their fruits, you shall know them. So the concept is very simple. If you're going to a, a you know, if you're going to a, a school, a particular university, well, look at the IQ level of the of the kids coming out of that school. And if 98 percent of them cannot find their their socks, <coughs> and they have no idea where they're living, and they couldn't point out the uh, United States on a map. Then that would, uh, that's the, uh, you know, by their fruits, you shall know them. <clears throat> so the fruitage of the world that we live in today is uh, a good 90% of the world has an IQ of 40. And uh, it's truly frightening to people who are intelligent, well grounded, uh, spiritually minded, and well grounded, uh, well read. Because any intelligent person looking at the entire world has to know that uh, we're in trouble. The whole entire human race is collapsing all around us. And we're told that um, the fastest growing things on the earth are religion. And every time you turn around, you read in the paper, well, the fastest growing religion today in the world is Jehovah's Witnesses. And then later on, you'll read, oh, the fastest growing religion in the world is the Mormon Church. Well, now, of course, we're being told all over the world, the fastest growing religion is the Islamic religion, Mohammedism. So I don't know what that tells you about, you know, where we're going as a human race but if the fastest growing and I think it probably is the fastest growing religion in the world today is Islam I think that's probably true but it's only because 98 percent of the world's population as I said has an IQ of 40 and so it's it's very disturbing to me except for the fact there is a there is a a light at the end of the tunnel for me in particular is because I'm 73 and very sick and I have a very bad heart and my lungs are very bad and I won't be here much longer thank God but what the world is telling me is that if Islam is the greatest and the fastest growing religion in the world and it may be uh, it just tells me that the human race has lost its mind the human race has lost its mind because anytime you see long bearded goofballs ranting and raving screaming and yelling with blades and 
daggers, marrying six and seven year old girls, and uh, you know all the pornographic violence, filth, debauchery, moon worship, silly ass bullshit that we call Islam. Everybody, anybody who is civilized in this world looks at the Islamic religion and wants to puke. And so, but if it's the fastest growing religion, then that tells me that the human race as a species on the earth is doomed. There is no hope. Because if you get uh, the overwhelming masses of majority loving uh, people with towels on their heads running around raping little seven-year-olds and killing people and putting bombs on little six-year-old children and sending them in to blow up themselves and everybody else and then go to their temples and worship a moon god, Allah. I mean, anybody who's ever read anything in history or actually gotten a, a degree in comparative religions knows what Islam is really all about. And it really is a mentally deranged. It's frightening how many people are bought into stupidity at its highest order. But that's not to say that Judaism or Christianity are any better, because they're not. It's just that Islam is attractive to so many people. I guess it's because uh, grown men can marry little seven-year-old girls and consummate the marriage. And incidentally, in, in Islam, if you want a little seven-year-old for the night, uh, you don't have to marry them. You can, you know, you can pay and get a license or something. I heard that uh, you know gives them so that you're married for that night. <coughs> And, of course, they're raping boys. We know that. It's been on CBS, big, big, big time uh, videos, I mean, movies and documentaries about the, the raping of young children in, in the Islamic country. So it's, it's quite a hell of a story. And uh, I don't know where it's all going to go, but, but my feeling is it's not going to be boding well for the world we live in because the human race, as I said, has lost its mind. And of course, when we see the Christian church, the greatest of all Christian churches, the Catholic church, and they're out there with their pornography and violence and blessing the mafia and mafiosis and gangsters are all being buried in the Catholic church and getting, you know, uh, special burials in Rome for uh, locals in Austria and mafiosis and Nazis and Hitler and and Martin Bormann and and all of the other Nazis that were in business with the Vatican. The Vatican really is a very, very dirty criminal organization. It has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with spirituality. It talks about Basically, it's just the Roman Empire, the reestablishment after the fall of Rome. Uh, Rome still dominated Europe. You know, if you think about that, Rome has dominated Europe for about 2,300 years. 2,300 years, Rome has dominated Europe. And for 2,300 years, Europe has dominated the world. So what does that tell you? All the violence and bloodshed and drug running in South America, all those you know, all of those uh, uh, Catholic countries, Vatican-controlled Catholic countries like Paraguay and Uruguay and Colombia, and Brazil, all Catholic, all Roman Catholic, all drug running, drug cartels, Medellin cartels. I mean, nobody seems to get the point. Vatican's behind all of this stuff. You know, I like what uh, one news commentator said many years ago. Has anyone, now I guess it was uh, Dick Gregory. Has anyone ever heard the Pope tell the, the people, the Catholic people, who supposedly follow the Pope religiously, and uh, has, has anyone ever heard the Pope tell the Catholic people in Ireland not to kill their Protestant brothers, their brothers and sisters who live in Ireland, not to kill the Protestants and not to kill their children. 
Nobody's ever heard uh, the popes, you know, say anything about that, about the Catholics killing Protestants. But then again, nobody's ever heard Billy Graham or any of these other fat, slob, homosexual goofballs with their little fairy uh, uh, hairdos and little effeminate hairdos dancing around the stage and with their boyfriends later on in the afternoon uh, with their boyfriends dancing on the stage and making hundreds of billions of dollars a year. But no one's ever heard any of these little uh, mentally deranged moron uh, Protestant ministers. Uh, they are really sick. But no one's ever heard any of the Protestants saying and to tell Ireland, you know, Protestant Ireland, not to kill their Catholic brothers and sisters, that they're both supposed to be Christian. So both of you are supposed to be worshiping God and, 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 and you know, believing in Christ and Jesus. Why don't you all get along and be peaceful together? No, no, no. There's murder, violence, raping, and plundering all over Europe. Well, George, all over the world. May I interject? Yeah. Uh, when you think about Germany, that was a Christian country. It Very went, much so. it went to war with Russia. That was a Christian country. Uh, <laughs> Poland was a Poland was a Christian country, and uh, you had um, or, as the, the three terms you always use: murder on an industrial scale, organized, financed, and directed. And I'm sure it was not organized and financed directed by the meek and mild or the peasantry. No. No. And it's all under the uh, umbrella of Christian nations. That's right. And, and killing, mass murder on an industrial, super mechanized, efficient scale. By their fruits, you shall know them. And also, too, with this thing called religion, as you mentioned uh, when you first started talking, you know, the real word that you're discussing, it comes down to one word. The stories all have the common denominator of intervention something not human intervened in human affairs That's and then quite right. literally quite literally when you look at history as you so eloquently explained you are talking about once that intervention occurred all hell quite literally broke loose that's right that's exactly the point and that's why evolution is irrelevant to any intelligent discussion uh, I believe that a certain amount of evolution occurs. I think it's provable, but but uh, the idea that man came from monkeys, no, no, man, uh, you know, I've always said that man is, has, does, has not or did not evolve from monkeys. Man is evolving into monkeys. You know, we didn't come from the apes. We are evolving into being apes. I think that's apes, correct. They have Lord. an IQ of about 30, and we've got a little bit less than that. The chimps are out there smarter than we are. Well, there, that is scientifically true. There are certain tasks, mental tasks, that chimps do perform better than humans. I mean, in terms of response, and uh, you can you can you can view this on YouTube. It has to do with pattern recognition, with numbers and things. And the humans, I mean, the chimps <laughs> have a better performance than the humans. So. It's there on YouTube. Anybody can verify that. Yeah. yeah. So we're not evolving from chimps. We're evolving into them. <clears throat> and they're smarter than we are in, on so many ways. And then, of course, when you look at all the pollution and the white-collar crime and all the treason and high crimes and wars and conspiracies of governments and po political organizations, you know... It truly is a very sad situation that the whole world finds itself in today. And there's no possible way, I don't see any possible way for the human race as a species, as a one, order, you know, one order of life on the earth. The human beings, I don't see that they have an opportunity or the knowledge on how to get out of the mess they're in. I mean, Einstein said it best, you can't solve the world's problems with the same people who created them. And so, you know, that's what insanity is. 
doing the same thing over and over each day expecting a different result no when you keep doing the same silly ass stuff you have always done and your grandmother did and your great grandfather did the same exact human mistakes and errors that Hitler made that Stalin made that all the, the fascists and murderers and emperors and Caesars and all of the Alexander the Greats and all of these pimps and murderers and mentally disordered venereal disease brain uh, eaten up when you do the same thing today that they have always done but you're expecting something different well that is uh, the dictionary definition in my book is uh, you know, insanity just just doing the same thing over and over and the more we change the more we stay the same we're still just as ignorant and dim-witted and silly and stupid and doing the same things that you know thousands of years ago they did I mean if you read the Sumerian records and some of the things that the Sumerian peoples over 5,500 years ago wrote uh, about their civilizations about their culture it's kind of funny. I mean, it really is. It's, 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 uh, you, know, you don't think of people 5,000 years ago uh, having a sense, uh, sense of humor and, you know, and seeing corruption and talking about how corrupt the officials are and how distorted and mentally deranged the, the, the judges are. But that's what they wrote. They also, the ancient Sumerians talked a lot about the, the silly stuff of every day you know, uh, uh, things that happen to people every day that are silly and and uh, I'm not even going to get into it because some of it's really uh, you know, really raw, but uh, it's true. And so, you know, when I see all of this happening, as I've said before, the I, the only light at the end of the tunnel for this world is a train coming. <laughs> and, and what's interesting too, Joy, what you were saying earlier, I mean, you know, the, the, the most absolute depravity has this complete veil of absolute legitimacy. Yeah. That's what's interesting about it. Yeah, that's true. It's all very, very legitimate. And if you try and show your fellow man the insanity and how it works, and why it works the way they do, and what it does, and, and, and try and explain to the human race what's going on, they will report you to uh, the authorities because there is something wrong with you. And, and the reason why, obviously, you're speaking un-German thoughts. That's what the old German people tell me, the old Germans years ago when I was talking to them about their their days under Adolf Hitler and they said, Well if you know, if you were <clears throat> they tell me, if you were living in Berlin when we were and talking the way you're talking to us now, you would be arrested and, and the charge would be thinking un German thoughts. Well we are not the we are going to rape the world. We are the masters of the human race. And you're coming out and talking about our government is corrupt and evil and therefore that means you are a traitor you are un-german and therefore you know even if you're right and what you're saying is true it doesn't matter you're un-german you're not thinking correctly the nazi thoughts and so they had something back then that they called um, uh, politically correct terminology politically correct language which meant if you're in Nazi Germany, you better understand who the boss is. You better understand that Hitler is not your leader of your country. He's God. You don't think so? You just open your mouth in Nazi Germany against the Führer and see what the hell get you get real quick. Well, that's the same thing we got today. You know, if you say anything at all about anybody, all the corrupt, fascist, murdering, communist, Nazis, all these pimps and mentally deranged morons running the world well that's 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 uh, against the law you know we can't say that that's hate that's hate mail that's hate talk 
I'm not, I don't hate anybody. I'm just calling you what you are, mentally deranged, demonic. <laughs> you know, all you got to do is look at the priest. He's running around with a, with a black robe. Raping black. your child, which is a yeah. homosexuality, rape, yeah. pedophilia, all in one. Doesn't get any better. Under the complete veil of absolute legitimacy. Uh, represents God himself. That's it. That's why you have an altar boy. Because you're uh, offering up a boy on the altar. He's called an altar boy. And all of that goes back to Judaism. When Abraham was going to sacrifice his son on an altar. I mean, that's where the altar boy idea comes from, is Abraham in the Old Testament put his son Isaac on an altar to, to uh, cut his throat. And so in the Old Testament, the Jewish Old Testament is filled with human sacrifice, pornography, violence, and God says, uh, go and cut the, the penises off of uh, all of your enemies and bring me their, their penises and bring me the, the foreskins and, and take their children and burn them with fire. And, uh, you know, it's a loving God. But, uh, <laughs> and so all of that, you know, uh, eventually, uh, you know, comes into Christianity. And uh, it didn't have to come into Islam. They've always had that silly crap. They've always had cutting children's heads and letting them bleed all over each other and cutting people up and letting them bleed in the streets uh, to show Allah how much they love him. They, they cut their children's. And then, of course, if their children say anything, they'll cut their heads off. So <clears throat> the world we live in is mentally disordered, but the problem is, as I see it, uh, I think probably if I were asked what is the biggest single problem that the entire human race faces, and God knows, you know, we have plenty of uh, problems, but the, I guess the biggest one that we face on the earth today is knowledge. Education and knowledge is gone. It has been taken from the human race so that we humans for the most part, the overwhelming majority of humans are wandering around aimlessly. They have no idea how they were born, where they came from, <coughs> what life is supposed to be, or where it came from, and where they're going when they die. Uh, they don't know how the body works. They don't know how politics works, or the banks, or government, or the police department. They don't, they don't know how anything works. All they know is getting laid, watching television or running around to the ball game or riding their motorcycles or whatever it is that they do for a little human entertainment but nobody seems to really understand what's going on on the earth and then, you know, unless and until you start looking at where, it, where did the human race come from how did they evolve and mutate into different kinds of humans over the thousands of years and then where are we going as a human race today where is the hell uh, is the human race going to be 500 years from today where will it be well you can imagine drive down through downtown los angeles on a friday night yeah go into uh you know the big cities late at night and see the gang wars and the fights and the drugs on the street and the prostitutes everywhere and prostitution and bodies being found in alleys and people with their heads cut off in New York City and you know thousands and thousands of people sleeping on the bridges and where is the human race going to be in 500 years now a thousand years well who was it uh, who wrote uh, 1984? George Orwell. George Orwell, yes. Uh, and so they asked George Orwell. There was an, an interview, and uh, he wrote 1984, talking about the horrible world that was coming. And they asked George Orwell, give us a, a summation of your book. What do you see the future of the human race? What do you see for the, hu for the whole future of human race? And he said, try and picture in your mind a soldier with an iron boot on the face of a child, on the face of humanity. That's what's coming for the world. 
an iron boot on a human face, smashing a face into the ground with a boot. <clears throat> well, that's what we've got today. I mean, if you don't love Allah, they'll cut your head off because they're a very peace-loving and loving people who love the Lord. They love Allah. And if you don't love Allah, they'll rape and plunder and cut your head off and cut your tongue out because they love the Lord. <clears throat> and Christians, they love the Lord Jesus. And if you don't love Jesus, they'll, they'll kill you. And so uh, they'll, blow you up, they'll blow you up. So I just see that the whole human race is uh, bent on self-destruction, and I realize that there's nothing you're going to do about it, that it's apocalyptic in its proportions, and that uh, there will come a time when, the, probably there will come a time when, like with that hundred monkey theory, where one monkey does something, all of a sudden everybody is doing it. Well, I think there's a few people waking up to find out that the human race is doomed. And now it might be, uh, it begins to look like the whole human race is beginning to awaken out of their slumber just well enough to understand they're finished. The, you know, there's only an inch and a half of topsoil left on the earth for, to grow all over the earth. The, the ground that you grow food in is polluted with toxic chemicals and nuclear fallout, and, you know, and Fukushima and, and uh, all the other horrible things which are happening that mankind has no, no control over along with the, uh, as the United Nations said, that they thought that they are estimating that by, I think it's within the next 10 to 12 years, that there will be no life in the oceans of the world, period. Nothing. Well, I don't know what that does for your, your fish sandwiches, <laughs> you know, and for your, your, for your fish dinners and, uh, and the peoples of the world that live on boating and fishing and depend on the fishing industry. When the UN says, well, probably in the next 20, 25 years, whatever, whatever that was, I was reading the article, they said there was coming a time very soon, within the next few years, when there would be no fish alive period all over the earth that's how far gone the earth is reason why is because all the big corporations not just in america but all over the world big corporations are dumping their toxic waste into the oceans and putting them in drums uh, highly highly poisonous toxic waste are being dumped into the oceans off of ships. Uh, we've got all kinds of documentary films showing that. Well, they've been doing that for, God knows, I don't know, 50, 70 years. Well, those drums do get rusty on occasions. And down, six miles down, uh, four miles down in the ocean, the pressure is very, very powerful on, on containers that are rusting and falling apart to start with. So when they pop down there, they pop and release huge, enormous amounts of toxic poisons into the oceans of the, of the world. All over the world this is happening. So, and down at the South Pole, the North Pole, and everywhere in between. The humans are raping the earth. And so unfortunately for whoever created us, we have become a disease. We murder our own children, we rape our own women, we destroy our food, we lie, we, we are detestable, we, we lap in the luxury of other people's uh, heartache. Uh, you know, the human race is a mess, but it's not getting any better, it's getting worse. And so, you know, when I look at all of this, and I see the children on the streets of America and on the streets of the world, the little ones who have no idea in the world what's going on and where their world is going. I know where it's going. I've been studying it uh, for over 53 years. I know where it's going. I know where it's going to happen, and I know who's doing it, and I know how they're doing it and why. But as long as you've got hundreds of millions of people in America 
one of the most uh, progressive countries in the world, supposedly one of the most uh, enlightened peoples of the world, and you've got hundreds of millions of people who have an IQ less than 40 dancing in the streets, excited and dancing and tears running from their eyes in joy that, um, that, that we have now finally, finally elected uh, a uh, Soviet communist Nazi fascist murdering bloodletting asshole murderers of the world we now have finally uh, you know uh, elected somebody like us in our great democracy we are a bunch of criminals and drug running thieves and liars and and adulterers and you know, uh, that's what we are in America. And we finally got somebody like us in the White House. So I just look at the world and look at what's going on all around the planet, and nobody else is any better than we are. We're just getting there first. Like Gore Vidal said, you know, mankind gets the government they deserve. Well, Jordan, if I may interject, first. if I may yep. interject, uh, Let's 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 read something from a court case here. This is Adderley versus State of Florida, 385 U.S. 3949, 1967. And you know, you refer to that word democracy in our great leaders. The chief enemies of Republican freedom are mental sloth, conformity, bigotry, superstition, credulity monopoly in the market of ideas and utter benighted ignorance of which God. many people are absolutely proud that they're ignorant don't bother me with that bullshit in books <laughs> I'm telling you that is an incredible quote read that over again I, I, that's, a ma that's a massive uh, quote where does that come from? Mr. Justice Douglas Adderley versus State of Florida, 385 U.S. 3949, 1967. The chief enemies of Republican freedom. And they don't say Democratic freedom, they say Republican freedom. And we're not talking about the Republican Party. No, 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 no. We're talking no. about a republic. Mm -hmm. The chief enemies of Republican freedom are mental sloth, conformity, bigotry, superstition, credulity, monopoly in the market of ideas, and utter benighted ignorance. I think that's a summation of everything you've said over the past half hour or so. <laughs> monopoly in the market of ideas. That to that's me right. sounds like Vatican. Um, you do not think like we do. You have un-German thoughts. You're dead. That's it. That's exactly right. Do you love Allah? No. Then off with his head. Murder his wife and children. Cut their heads off and teach them that there's only one way to live, and that's to worship our God, the Lord Jesus, or Allah, or Yahweh, or Yahweh, or somebody else, or whoever it is, or Brahma. So, yeah, that's it. Monopoly, no a monopoly in the market of ideas. You either yep. think like we do, or you're dead. And it's very, very interesting when you're talking about these things, particularly when you're talking about Nazi Germany. Un-German yeah. thoughts. <coughs> I always break the etymology down of this word government. Maybe some in the audience will think I'm crazy for thinking this way, but I do think it's interesting you take this word government government and uh, in the ancient languages vowels were of no consequence anybody doing any genealogy looking at how their surnames changed over the years the various spellings and such will understand mm -hmm. this vowels are of no consequence then you get in the consonants you have this word govern meant we'll take m-e-n-t i personally am of the opinion t's and d's are interchangeable because you have theology which relates to deity the t Theology, D, deity. The word to is related to the word dual. To, T-W-O, starts with a T. Dual starts with a D. T's and D's, interchangeable. Okay, so take government. Uh, change the I, the E and meant to an I, it becomes government. So if you're going to have a government, 
You've got to <laughs> govern the mint. You've got to control the money. But take the word mint. T's and D's are interchangeable. Take mint. Make the T a D, it becomes mind. So to govern the mint, the money, you've got to control the mind. And as he says here, the chief enemies of Republican freedom are, among them, monopoly and the market of ideas. So all these things come down to what are they thinking? The hearts and minds, that's where the real control's at. Well, that, that, that reminds me of when you go to a bank and open up a bank account, they will tell you that this bank account is, is protected uh, by the FDIC, and it says that the, your bank account is protected by the full faith and credit of the United States government. That's what it says. The full faith and credit of the United States government. And I said, wait a minute, that's how I live, is on faith and credit. I don't have anything. I just have faith I'll still be alive tomorrow. God will allow me to live one more day, so I have faith. And now, why do I have faith? Because I have credit. And so faith and credit implies just what you said, that the people will believe, you know, how did you say that? So that and, and, uh, it's the market of ideas. People have to believe that something is right. They have to believe it's okay. Well, Just as like, as I uh, was saying, Jordan, a government, uh, a government, the mind. They they're always interested in controlling the money. Government, government. Hey, maybe I'm being a little too loose here with my etymology, but I think it's just interesting anyway. Nonetheless, government, they have to govern the mint. And to govern the mint, you have to control the mind. That's right. Because if you, if you don't have control of the mind, the people will not have faith and credit. You know, you're giving them credit. You're not giving them money. You know, you, when you, you know, I've said that for years. You know, when you get paid in America, they're not giving you anything. They're giving you something that you have faith in. You have faith that it means something. I mean, how many people have I thought about, I mean, I don't know how it works in other countries, but <clears throat> in America, if you get something you have to pay, you call it a bill. So you have to pay this bill or pay that bill. And so, so you know, suppose you come, suppose, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. If you were a painting contractor, and I hired you to come and, and paint my office. When you're through with the job, you bring me a bill. This is what happens if you buy anything in a store. They give you a bill. And, uh, and so you give me a bill for the work you've done, then, uh, and say the bill is for $100. So you giving me a bill for $100, or if you're in Sears or a big some store and you bought something for 50 bucks, They'll give you a bill for fifty dollars. They expect you to pay, and so when you give me a bill for a hundred dollars for painting my office, you've given me a bill for a hundred dollars. I reach in my pocket and I pull out a hundred dollar bill, and I give it to you. So I just paid a bill with a bill. Right. It's called a hundred dollar bill. Well, of course, if you had given me a bill for twenty dollars i give you a twenty dollar bill so how in the hell do you pay a bill with a bill well that that makes sense jordan because uh you know you you uh, that, that's a, that scenario um someone owes someone money and the way the debt is discharged is a debt bearing currency a bill is giving to the other person so you owe me 20 but I'm giving you <laughs> you give me a bill for 20 our debts cancel out that's right the debt's been discharged that's exactly right that has not been paid it has been discharged it has been tendered that's exactly right it's been tendered meaning you gave me you owe me $20 yeah well I owe you $20 so why don't we just call it even and keep a record of it so that's why you have to have a bank account Account meaning that you have to account for all of this uh, uh, nonsense you're doing. You know, you didn't. He he didn't pay you, and you didn't pay him, and so we have to keep account who paid who and who didn't pay who, and so that's why you have a bank account, and so then you have to make an accounting at the end of the year, and in America, 
uh, we know that the corporation is uh, the U.S. government is a corporation, and all big corporations, Sears, General Motors, General Electric, any and all big corporations have what they call in-house accounting, meaning they have their own accountants that are uh, responsible each day to see how much money the company made, how much did it spend, how much is it owe. And so it's an in-house accounting for the corporation. Well, since the United States of America, the United States in Washington, D.C., is a corporation. It's a municipal corporation. It's a business. And therefore, the in-house accounting for that corporation, we didn't talk about who owns the corporation, but the in-house accounting is called the internal revenue system. Not external for the whole country. No, no. Internal revenue. Meaning it's the accounting for the employees of the corporation who are being paid money. They're making money. They're spending money. And it's all being done inside the corporation. So they have an uh, internal revenue service. Uh, people don't understand how the world works. They have no idea in the world how religion works. They have no con concept in their mind about how theology, government, banks, insurance companies, police department, God, nothing. No one knows how anything works. And that's why in the Bible there's this, the one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I totally am involved in the ancient wisdom of the world, which is encoded in the Bible, encoded in the uh, sacred scriptures of all the cultures of the world. I have the highest of respect for spirituality, for the divine presence in the universe that men have called God. I don't know what God, I don't, I don't know what God is. I just know it's not on TBN, that's for damn sure. And it's not on television, and it's not those silly-ass uh, effeminates jumping around with their hairdos and their Rolex watches, making hundreds of millions of dollars a year to spend on their boyfriends in the Bahamas. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with spirituality. So when I see, uh, the, the you know, in the scripture it says that the, the, the what is it about... Um, uh, slips my mind right now that we oh I think it's in the book of Ecclesiastes that says where there is no vision the people perish let me say that again where there is no vision the people perish well that is precisely where we are today around the world in all countries that I've traveled in I've been all over the world and basically speaking, the people of the countries I've been in seem to have no vision, meaning they have no perception of where we have come from on the earth, what we are as humans, where we are now, and where we're progressing and going to. Uh, people just don't know. They don't know. All they know is they... <clears throat> They went to school and did what they did, and went to work and paid their bills and watched basketball and got old and died and the country and the government ripped them off and they're dying in wars and dying of drugs and dying of stupidity and dying of... And so people have no idea. So where there is no vision, the people perish. Well, the reason why in America, especially the people of America, have no power to do anything at all, period. The people of America have no power to do anything. They're powerless. And why? Because knowledge is power. And if you have no knowledge, you have no vision, you have no education, you don't even have a job. And therefore, you are of no value to anyone. You can't think very clearly. You don't know how to read. You can't spell. And so, thank God, at least we've got old cars to work on and beer and and uh, and television, uh, incredibly important television shows for Americans to watch, like uh, Beavis and Butthead 
and uh, The Simpsons and uh, all the silly cartoons that laugh at Americans and laugh at this country and mock and laugh at the Western civilization while, uh, while the insanity, the ungodly demonic insanity we call Islam with their murdering <coughs> women and children and killing and bloodletting <coughs> and dancing around and raping boys and marrying little six-year-old girls and all that nonsense and then of course Christianity and Judaism and don't even get me started on Judaism that's a real story there so I look at the whole world and at 73 years old I, I know where it's going well, Jordan, um, Jordan, you no. you mentioned uh, you know where uh, the, the the thing about vision and knowledge. Once again, it gets back to what I say: government, government, govern mind. And there's a maximum of law that says to inquire. I'm paraphrasing, but the basic gist of it is to inquire into the true nature of things. Inquire into the names. So you take this yeah. word revenue, it means re-venue, and you spoke of internal revenue. That implies there's a external revenue, there's a difference in venue, a difference in jurisdiction. But nobody understands these things. That's as right. you said, they're, they're just the... Uh, no, that, that's, I mean, as you said, you talk about the Simpsons, what are they talking about when they're all of a sudden now zombies are the hot new Hollywood <laughs> fad? Yeah. That's how most people are walking around. Uh, another yeah. thing, too, spe very specific, because the devil is, is in the details quite literally. When you have a Social Security number, uh, someone else has your power of attorney. That's why when you go to court, if you do not enter a plea, they have jurisdiction to enter that plea for you, because they have your power of attorney. Yeah. No one disclosed that fact to you. <laughs> when you uh, signed up for your social security number or you were enumerated at birth but once again that's one of those things you can live a whole lifetime and uh, never know from cradle to grave and never have any idea what you were subjected to because that's you right. because you don't know and quite possibly if you try to know then you may be thinking on un very un-german thoughts that's and, right. uh, you know, and then you go from being an asset to a liability, and we all know liabilities are often liquidated. <laughs> you got it. That's exactly right. So in America, if you are very smart, intelligent, well-read, and you're a doctor, or you are you are you know professional in some field, and especially doctors and medical, and if you're trying to do something to help the human race, and legitimately a good scientist and doing some great work. To, to to heal uh, some malady in, in the world and to heal uh, you know, cancer. And if you find a, a cure to some disease and you're sincerely trying to help your fellow man, you will go to prison in America. You will go to prison in America. Wait, you will lose your license to practice That's and it. then you will go to prison. That's exactly right. The prisons are filled with good people who have tried to do something to help their fellow man and understanding government, to understand medical, and they'll you know, get a knock on the door at 3 o'clock in the morning, come with me, you're under arrest, and uh, what's the charge? You're trying to help the human race, you're trying to do something to cure some disease, and we don't goddamn want that. We, well, we don't want anybody uh, 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 curing cancer. We have a multi-billion dollar industry that's in the hundreds of billions now around the world called cancer research. And the doctors tell me that uh, the word cancer has been copyrighted and trademarked by the, uh, by the Cancer Society in America. It's, you can't even use that word cancer in an ad or advertisement or commerce at all unless you, uh, you know, unless they give you permission because the word cancer and cancer research is now copyrighted and trademarked. It's a business. It's like, it's like McDonald's. You can't use McDonald's hamburger in your stand because it's trademarked. 
It's copyrighted. Somebody owns it. Well, somebody owns the very word cancer and cancer research. It's owned. And so it's making hundreds of billions of dollars a year off of the poor, slack, ignorant, ill-informed, unread, unwashed dingbats of the world who pour money into Cancer Research Incorporated. My God, the stupidity of the human race. When we know, we've already had proven, back in the 1900s, they already knew what caused cancer and how to cure it overnight. All you need to do is make yourself aware of the work of one man in particular. And I could give you ten more. But one guy in particular, his name was Royal, R-O-Y-A-L, Rife. Royal Rife. Look up Royal Rife in the in the encyclopedias or dictionaries or, in, or on the web. Royal Rife. And uh, you will see that he developed an electronic microscope that was so incredibly unique that it could see 25,000 or more uh, in, in, um, in magnification. And he discovered with his, with his uh, microscope that he invented, uh, he d discovered that all diseases and all germs vibrate at uh, different frequencies. And so he connected to his uh, uh, microscope some kind of an electrical device that he could kill the frequencies of a particular disease. And so he found out all the different frequencies for all the different diseases. And then it was very simple. Royal Rife had a microscope and he could tell what, what disease is taken over your body. Then he would electrically kill the frequency of that disease and overnight you cure it. Well, they, they, they actually, the doctors uh, in America honored him in New York with a big dinner and thanking him for helping to save the human race with something so simple as killing a disease electrically. And about two days later, uh, that was pulled off the papers, it was pulled off, and he was, he was persecuted for the rest of his life, and people called him every name in the book, all the major medical, the American Medical Association, which was founded by Nazis. Hitler's people, the doctors in Nazi Germany, founded in America something called the American Medical Association. AMA is a Nazi fascist uh, you know, Jew-killing murderers who came here to America and founded what we call the American medical industry. Nazis, SS, Gestapo, Martin Bormann, Vatican Operation Paperclip. Get it? Understand what I'm saying? And so people like Royal Wife end up, you know, uh, in poverty, mocked and, and uh, marginalized and left for dead. Why? Because he did something that was spectacular. He ended all uh, diseases. Well, my God, you're not going to have... Logic alone would tell you that if you're going to end all diseases with some silly-ass machine that just destroys all the disease electrically, that means nobody's going to be going to a doctor, Airhead. Nobody's going to be going to a doctor because they don't need a doctor. So you've killed all the diseases, and we can't have that. You're going to prison. Well, You're that that the money that gets back to what Orwell talked about in 1984. That really is a book about the chicken shit pecking order, the hierarchical uh, structure of society that yeah, must be imposed must mm -hmm. be imposed from top down and. Uh, you know, when you think of O'Brien and Winston Smith, it was all about mind control. That's why oh, Winston was. Smith was tortured. He's holding up, you know, three or four fingers, and Winston Smith's like, I see three fingers, and he's being tortured by O'Brien. No. Yep. So, you know, it's about governance of the mind. And it, it, it just, you know, it leads into the question uh, just how powerful the mind is. Once again, I always go back to that government, government, govern mind. And mm -hmm. that gets into this whole, this whole issue of health because that's your real wealth is your health. So, of course, that oh, wow. has to be controlled on the molecular to the cellular level. Yeah. 
And that's, uh, that's, uh, all of this is very, very critical for the human race to understand. Uh, and I have said, um, uh, uh, when you get into the etymology of words, words are very important. Um, you know, because using words in courts is not the same way you use that word on the street. We know that in America. Whatever words you use on the street, if you use those same words in a court, they mean something totally different. Well, totally different. George, take that word God. Is that word so much different than the word code? I mean, you know, there's people who have a cod piece, and that cod piece covers the phallus. Okay? That's right. The word cod rhymes with God. I know people might not think I'm being very loose with my etymology here, but cod rhymes with God, and cod covered the phallus, and we all know God has a connection to the phallus once you understand the symbolism. But that word cod, put an E on the end of it, it becomes code. So, you know, you could say, in some sense, you know, the elite, you know, which gets into Saturn, gets into the word L, the elite understands the code. That's what gives them the godlike power. I mean, in, in my mind, unless I'm playing fast and loose with the etymology, code and God are very close. And I think you you know this better than anyone, Jordan. The Bible is an encoded work. There's the exoteric meaning for the people sitting in the pews, who for most of most of human history did not smell so nice. And then there's the uh, the meaning for the priesthood. And, you know, holding a copy of that Bible was illegal for the common man till the, uh, till the printing press came out. So, all very interesting, you know. <clears throat> so, when you get into the words uh, like uh, commerce and, and congress, as I said, which means sex, um, and courts, you know, why do you, uh, why do you go to a court where you play basketball on a court? You play tennis on a court. Uh, you know, you're courting a girl. You know, and so the whole idea is to, in, the, in law, in a court, is to, when you go into a court, obviously you have two teams. They're called teams of lawyers. So you have two teams. And somebody's so getting screwed. I, There's, in the that, end, it's an adversarial that, that. system. Somebody, I don't mean to be rude and interrupt, but somebody, when you go back to the, the sexual symbolism at all, somebody's getting screwed. Do go That's on, That's exactly what it means. Commerce, commerce, congress. You have co and then you have congress. Dictionary says congress is sex. And so, uh, and so when you're talking about words, another classic example, because I want to get into a different subject, and, but, uh, but to preface that subject, I would say that uh, people use words all the time they don't understand. And it's, and it's ludicrous on the face of it that they're using words and terms that I know they don't realize what they're saying. But in a classic example, is the word uh, church. You know, Christians go to church, but they have no idea in the world where the word church comes from. They think it sounds very spiritual and very holy, but in point of fact, no, it, it has nothing to do with spirituality, God, or anything holy. Go back and do your homework and find out where the word church comes from. Church as an English word, C-H-U-R-C-H, which is directly comes from a Scottish word in Scotland, Kirk, which is K-I-R-K or K-E-R-K, Kirk. Kirk, if you're a Christian on Sunday morning in Scotland, you go to Kirk. But if you're a Christian in England, you go to church. So church is Kirk. And this is why, incidentally, you have Captain Kirk in Star Trek because Star Trek is, a, uh, is, you know, he's on, he's taking the world and he's taking mankind. Captain Kirk is taking mankind where it's never been before on a good ship, Enterprise. Why is it called Enterprise? Because Enterprise is a business. And that's what the word church comes into the picture because Kirk 
is church and church is a business and uh, and the the word church as i said goes back to the scottish word kirk captain kirk this is why churches are divided into denominations like tens and twenties and fifties denominations because um, the word church kirk the word kirk can be traced back to in the ancient Middle East uh, when the Knights of uh, Templars went into the Crusades in the Middle East. They learned a lot about the cultures of the Middle East. And in the Middle East and in ancient Greece and the ancient world, there was a goddess named Circe, C-E-R-E-S, or Circe. Mother Circe or Mother Circe. And, and she was uh, worshipped all over the Middle East. And uh, Mother Circe was a Greek goddess, as I said. And if you go back to uh, the, the uh, dictionary on, on, uh, on Grecian mythology, and look up Mother Circe, and it will tell you Mother Circe was able to hypnotize people in mass, hypnotize them, bring them into her home, and shut the door and lock it behind them so they couldn't get out, and then would take their brains and their minds, and magically, with magic, would take their minds away so that they knew not who they were, they didn't know where they were, because their brains and their minds had been taken away by Mother Circe. And then it says in Greek mythology that she could then eat them she would live off of them like a spider with a fly and it eats it wraps you up and, and, and completely locks you down and then it can take its time and eat you and uh, and live off of you well that's what mother Circe in greek mythology was able to do hypnotize bring people in lock them up wrap them up and take their brains and then eat them well that's exactly what mother Circe, mother kirk mother church does Mother Church uh, brings in people with her magic, you know, with all their candles and, and all of their uh, uh, regalia of holiness and the, the priests with the robes and all these beautiful music and organs. And that's another word you need to look into, organs, because they're blowing on an organ. And look it up in a dictionary and you'll see that the musical instrument organ comes from the idea of a male organ. And it's a pipe. You're blowing on a male organ. So that's where it comes from. And so then when you understand that uh, Mother Church is able to hypnotize people, bring them in, and they'll lock them up, take their, take their brains away, take their minds away, and then feed off of them. Well, of course, Mother Church is making hundreds of billions in America alone off of the poor, the weak, the ill-informed, the unread, you know, it's just an incredible array of, of criminality that is blowing through the American society where thousands and thousands of people on Sunday, go on television Sunday mornings and look at what's going on with just countless thousands of people going to these mega churches paying huge sums of money and there's 25,000 people paying huge sums of money per seat I don't know what that comes to every week every Sunday but it must be hundreds of millions and then of course you have the, those other incredible uh, comedy team uh, on TBN Trinity Broadcasting Company with that poor sick mentally disordered woman with that big huge flowerly wig on the pink wig and she's dancing around the stage with this enormous pink wig knowing i mean i know the people who work for her uh, what's her name uh, can't remember the name of those two mentally disordered people the old guy and his wife and, oh uh, uh, jim baker and tammy Faye. no no those for the mentally disordered ones that went to prison. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, the other one was, uh, who was it? Um, well, I can't remember right now. Uh, I know who but, you're talking uh, about, though. I know what they look like. Yeah, yeah, with those big, flowerly, uh, uh, no, no. 
<clears throat> the big uh, hairdos and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, I knew I knew a uh, a very bright minister who who knew them personally, but his job he he, he got a job he he quit the ministry because he found out what the TBM was really all about, and he went to work for a liquor store. And uh, he worked in uh, Balboa Island in, in, in Orange County, California. This minister that I knew, he was very, very bright. He had a PhD in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and was one, and he used to have all kinds of awards in his uh, office, uh, academic awards from around the world. But he fell out of love with, uh, with religion and with the church. And so he went to work in a liquor store, and he used to tell us. So we'd sit down on Balboa Island, Balboa Island in Orange County, Southern California, and we'd sit at his house, and he would tell us all about religion, all about the universities, and and why if you're going to be a minister, you have to go to a seminary, and it goes back to the Seminole or seminary or seamen. And so, and it all has to do with sex at the seminary. And uh, and then he would tell us about how uh, at night when he was running the liquor store, um, the TBN, Trinity Broadcasting, uh, for some reason I can't remember their name, but I will in a few minutes. But anyway, that those two goofballs that are running TBN would come in. He said that they would drive in with a huge van and every other th- every two or three nights they would come uh, late night uh, with a huge van and pick up thousands of dollars in whiskey and beer and, and all kinds of, of liquor and, um, there, and he said sometimes we'd have to have two trips there was so much booze going out the back door of this <coughs> liquor store that TBN was buying, and he said, and, and sometimes he told me this. Is a, he said I would sometimes have to deliver because they'd run out of booze at their gay parties and at all these. And he said it was incredible gay parties at TBN, uh, and he would have to deliver some of the booze that they ran out of. And he said that was an incredible sight. Uh, you know, the, the 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 heads of TBN drunk out of their mind falling all over themselves, laughing and drinking. Sex, and said, uh, drugs, and sex, drugs and r- rock, rock and roll. roll. And he said, and so, uh, he said, so when I see TBN on, I, I cannot imagine how people do not see through these people, who they are. They're criminals, they're into sex, they're into pornography, they're into <laughs> child pornography, they're into drugs, all kinds of incredible stuff behind the scenes that he, you know, used to deliver and see. So that's why I really don't, you know, I'm not overjoyed about watching TBN and Trinity Broadcasting and and Tam and Baker and Tammy Baker, that mentally disarranged moron, and all those other goofies and, I mean, it's really a disgusting picture in America of what we call religion. Well, but the one thing they all have in mind is money, sex, and keep your people stupid. Make sure everybody is dancing around and doing their silly stuff, but make sure nobody questions the authority. So I've always, you know, I've always known what was going on. I, I knew a long time ago what was what was happening. Did- so,